Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to speak tonight about the uh, native wildlife in Tasmania that are treasured by everyone who visits the state and especially by those of us who live here. We have a unique flora and fauna because Tasmania was once part of the supercontinent of Gondwana, which split apart uh, 200 million years ago. The Australian continent itself had our tiny little tip of uh, southern of Tasmania that was the last to separate from Gondwana and we left the Antarctic continent a mere 45 million years ago. While the rest of Australia drifted closer to the equator and became warmer and drier, Tasmania has stayed cool and because of that we've kept our Gondwanan legacy. And we have rare and beautiful plants and animals here that exist nowhere else on the planet. We still have the Anaspides tasmaniae, which is a mountain shrimp that looks like Triassic fossils that are over 230 million years old. And we have alpine trees like the Northophagus gunnii that grew in the Antarctic before it was ice. So these intrinsic value of our native wildlife, however, are totally lost, it appears, uh, on, by this government. And we've seen recently some really uh, horrendous examples of the lack of value this government holds in native wildlife. Native animals are treated by the government as uh, an inconvenience, a pest, a crop destroyer and a nuisance. Permits to kill them are being handed out by De Pipwi, it seems, like lollies to kids at a party. The Launceston Golf Club's owners didn't like animal excrement dirtying the soles of their golf golfer's shoes, so De Pipwi gave them a permit to kill the ducks, possums, native hens and wallabies. And it was only thanks to the passionate outcry of Tasmanians about the killing of this wildlife that reached as far as Hollywood and gave Tasmania such bad press that caused De Pipwi eventually to withdraw that authorisation. Native animals in Tasmania are meant to be protected, but the meaning of that word is totally lost on the government. Uh, this is the same government, Madam Speaker, that lifted the ban on 1080 per poison permits, the barbaric and cruel poison that the Greens effectively banned when we were in government. And the lack of rigor, rigor around authorising crop protection permits has led to clear negligent decisions that endanger native populations. For example, permits were granted to kill wombats even when the local populations in Narantapu National Park were being devastated by psychoptic mange. Three permits to kill wombats in that area, granted by De Pipwi, were just withdrawn after lobbying about local extinctions. Since then, distressingly, we've heard that mange remains uncontrolled and wombats have been all but wiped out in that area. And this week we learnt that permits for so-called crop protection have been issued to shoot native black swans across Tasmania and the government has been caught sanctioning the killing of 8,000 swans in the last three years. Thousands of beautiful, graceful swans have been killed and maimed by guns under permits issued by the very same department that's responsible for protecting them. Outrageously, two farms a stone's throw from a key biodiversity area, the Tamar Island wetlands, have been granted permits to kill 460 swans in the past three years. We tabled photos today from eyewitnesses to a 7th of June shooting of swans on a farm that borders the wetlands and shows a swan with a missing wing unable to take flight, seemingly maimed from that shoot. Apart from the obvious cruelty involved for those swans that were maimed and didn't die, what's so disturbing is the total lack of assessment by De Pipwi of impact on the local swan populations. And we know this because ornithologists who volunteer their time to count birds, resident experts on the swan population, have said the data don't exist because no proper studies have been done. The permits were issued to shoot these black swans who mate for life with no diligence or care. I received an email just this afternoon from a gentleman who owns a property overlooking the extensive prime swamp habitat of the Swan Bay wetlands, further up the Tamar River, from where the swans were shot. He had already been very concerned at what was happening to the swans this year. 
He said, my family has lived here for almost 40 years. In our experience, it's normal to see dozens and sometimes hundreds of swans feeding and nesting in Swan Bay. They're a vital part of this natural ecosystem. Of late months, on most days, there are now between zero and sometimes two swans only. We're utterly devastated to learn the government has authorised the secretive killing of the swans that we should be, protect, uh, that we should be protecting. He's extremely dismayed and angered by what he perceives to be a clear-cut case of legal negligence that has directly resulted in the catastrophic collapse of the natural swan population in Swan Bay. It has now become, he said, a swanless bay. Madam Speaker, the complete disregard shown by the government for the welfare of our native wildlife when they issue permits to kill is an outrage and a disgrace. The Greens will continue to push for an investigation into the process for issuing crop protection permits or, as they should be called, native wildlife kill permits, and the animal welfare and long-term impacts of this. We're facing a global mass extinction event with one million species directly being threatened worldwide, and we're in a climate emergency. All Tasmanians who are concerned about these realities and who treasure our protected native animals would want the government to stop handing out licences to kill them.